In this video, I'll show you how and why I use softboxes with grids in my small home studio. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey, and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that's got everything for us photographers. Now, when it comes to choosing softboxes for use in my small home studio, the first thing I tend to check is, does my new softbox have the option of a grid? Because using grids in a small home studio is a really good idea if you want to control and direct the light. Now, sometimes the grids are optional extras, but if you choose something like this glow softbox, this is the Easy Lock 12 by 56, for example, this one comes with the grid in the box which is fantastic and makes it a really good choice. So why would you want to use a grid on a softbox? What does it do? For the answers to those questions, the best thing to do is get a light set. Let's get a model in. Let's get shooting. So to help me out today, I've got the amazing Chloe. Chloe is going to be the model for this shoot. And before we get to grids, let me show you how a shot would look without a grid. So I've got a really basic setup. We've got Chloe right up against my studio wall. I've got an Explore 400. I've got a softbox, but no grid. Let me just take a shot like this and show you how the light spreads around my small home studio. So Chloe, if you want to come back into the center, I'm going to come up against the wall here. And if you just look towards the edge of the softbox, perfect. Here we go. So in this picture, you can see that Chloe is correctly lit. The wall looks good, but directly behind Chloe is the white wall of my studio. And although it's not actually showing white, there's definitely some detail there, which means at least some of the light is reaching my far wall. So this time I've added a grid. It's the same softbox, the same Explore 400, just with a grid added. So I'm going to put this in the same place. We'll spin it around like that. Now, adding a grid will reduce the output of the light, usually by about a stop, but let's find out for sure. So I'm going to get my light meter. Chloe, I'm going to pop this under your chin. And I'm getting F4, where we were shooting at F5.6. So that is exactly a stop. Adjust it. And I'm getting back to F5.6. So that's great. Let's take the same shot and see how the grid has changed the picture. Here we go. So Chloe is still correctly lit, the background is still lit, but the far background, that white wall, has now become a black wall. And that's because the grid has restricted the spread of the light, no light reaches the wall, it's going to come out black. Perhaps the easiest way to see what's going on is actually to photograph Chloe from the other side. So without the grid, the light spreads far and wide in my studio. But the second I put the grid on and take the same picture, you can see how much more restricted the spread of light has become. So grids are great for directing light, but they're not there just to stop light reaching things. You can use the direction of a grid to put light just where you want it. So maybe you actually want to light the wall a little bit. I mean, not that wall, it's really horrible, but that wall over there looks great. So I can do that with a grid. Now at the moment, my softbox and grid are facing directly at Chloe. Let's just take this picture, see how it looks. Now I've metered this out already, so it should be good. Great. And sure enough, the wall behind Chloe is black. But all I need to do is just turn this a little bit. So now I've turned my beam of light, so that'll add a little bit of light to the background, but also take away light from the right-hand side of this shot. So the grid directs and channels the light. So in theory, a grid is going to give me a more dramatic portrait, but it's not quite that simple. So here I've got my standard softbox, no grid, in a fairly standard lighting position. Let's just take a picture of Chloe and see how it looks. Okay, Chloe, here we go. And that looks absolutely fine. Background is fairly evenly lit. Chloe looks great. So with the grid on the softbox, this is going to give a more dramatic look? Possibly. Let's take this shot. Here we go, Chloe. Well, at first glance, the answer is probably, well, no, not really. It has hardly made any difference. It's not until you go for a wider view that you can see what the grid has done. It's effectively vignetted the edges by channeling that light into a much smaller area. So I've moved the softbox around. That in itself should make the light more dramatic. Let's see what happens in this lighting situation. Okay, Chloe, here we go. 
What I've got is great lighting on Chloe once again, but the background is basically gone. It's black, and Chloe is drifting off into the shadows on the right hand side. So to separate Chloe from the background, I've added a second light. It also has a grid on it. So once again, I'm going to get the benefit of this gridded light direction and control. Let's see if this works. Here we go. Yes, it does. I now have light on both sides of Chloe. That looks great. But here's the thing about grids. That's how they work, but that's not necessarily how you have to use them. You can be a bit more creative. For example, if I take the grid on the strip box and I peel half of the grid away, I've got a gridded side that's going to reach Chloe, and then I've got a brighter, by about one stop, side that's going to put some light on the background. Let's see if this works. And it does. Grids are great, they give direction to the light, but remember, you can be creative on how you use them. So with that in mind, let's do a little shoot like this. So Chloe, are you ready? Yeah. Okay, let's get some pictures. Here we go. <laughs> So to sum up, I use grids to control the spread of light, I'll use them to place light just where I want it to go, and I can even create effects like vignettes with them. For me, softboxes with grids are an essential item in my small home studio. Now if you've enjoyed this video or you've got any questions, leave me a comment below. Click on the bell icon for regular notifications of all the brand new videos right here in Adorama TV, and of course, click on that subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching.